Yo, what's going on guys? Today's video is going to be the last of the Grand and Legfest weapons on which weapons to bar. I should be able to finish every weapon in this video. I did take a little bit of time to get a better thought with the current 140 Primal to where I want to put the crit weapons. So it took a little bit of time. One thing I would like to mention is I want to give a shout out to Purifying Thunderbolt, which should be getting a full limit break this month. Though currently at the time of recording this video, there is no confirmation on its full limit break. However, I do believe that it has a possibility with Fire Guild Wars right on the horizon of this month that it may get a full limit break right before Guild Wars. Leave in the comments what you guys believe that it will get upon full limit breaking. I believe currently it has main character TA rate up and bonus damage, which probably will end up being all allies. Also, it comes with Sentence, um, no second skill. I believe the second skill is gonna probably be something either brand new to the game, power creep wise, or something lackluster like Majesty. I, we don't know currently, just speculating, but do tell me how you guys feel with that. And with that, we're on to the video. And with that, we're starting with the first weapon, Reunion. Now, Reunion, people ask me why didn't I put this in tier two? Reason being that while this is a optimal main hand, this is the optimal main hand for a certain build, which is pretty common. It's the meta build, monkey neo build. So this is pretty much optimal because DATA boost from the rose, the rose, uh, my fault, from the love eternal isn't that important. So what people opt out for is to get more attack modifier. Also, since it gives the win attack up, it also synergizes really well with Grimnir, but it doesn't work for every team. And because of that, I didn't want to put it as a tier two, maybe in hindsight, maybe put it tier 2.5. I was on the fence about it, but the real reason I really put it back to three is because as a grid weapon as well, it's not really that great. It sports a double attack modifier, one being the basic triple, uh, the basic level three attack, um, normal mod that everyone has on their life as well. No, not, well, not everyone now, but generally most of the like first weapons have this normal three mod and it has winds majesty, which is not that great. It does make it a replacement for a Bahamut weapon. If you're looking for health though, which is not bad. Um, but in primal win itself, you really don't run multiple of this weapon. So I did have a hard time putting it in tier three. I mean, tier two. Um, it's, it's right, it's right there between 2.5 and three as it's a, it's a optimal weapon for the current win meta. But if you don't have the meta units, its viability falls up drastically. So it, it, you do need to have specific units to really utilize this weapon to its maximum potential. And not everyone has that. So I was trying to keep that in mind, but yeah, it's, it's between 2.5 and three. So. Hopefully I clear that up with people and they can understand my stance on it. On to the next weapon. Now on to Mirror Blade Shard. I, our first definite tier three. Now the reason this weapon falls into tier three is because it's, it's lackluster. It's extremely lackluster. It's a okay main hand for doctor builds, but there'd be much better options if you can run it. Um, this weapon is Electro's weapon, so you have to have her. It's mainly used in Kime grids as a dagger option because you don't really have much other options in the, in the grid currently, though this weapon is definitely on the replacement chart. If it's any weapon to be replaced, Mirror Blade Shard is most likely to be replaced. The Ogi effect is rather strong though because it does have remove one buff from a foe. With Summer Alex losing the ability to dispel, this is one of your primary sources of the spell now, if you're running a dagger build without Esvira. So it, it does have viability, not to mention that the nuke every two turns, it's per, pretty strong, you know? It, it's not like an awful weapon, but it's not an optimal weapon if you have to compare it to other weapons of the dagger variety. It's a little bit lackluster, now, as for the grid, it's, it's, it's okay. But the problem with this weapon is that you don't really see it more than a one of, um, due to the fact that one, Kime grids 
tend to only have to be able to run one hope oh, Kime grids technically only have the ability to run one weapon, which is kind of unfortunate. So with with you having multiple of weapons, it's generally not that great. Though not everyone has access to Kime, myself included. So it really depends on where you at in the game. Generally, I would put this as a one-off though. For Magna, I wouldn't even look at this weapon. Um, <laughs> it, it's a main hand, but not something that I would go out of my way to bar it for Magna because there's no content currently where you want to run a dagger main hand for Magna. And honestly, you have the Guild Wars dagger, which probably benefits you more due to Magna not having nearly as high multi-attack rate as Primal, thanks to the AK and the Primal. And also this weapon is a double attack boosting weapon. So you do get a little bit of double attack with double like double Titan and Titans. So Magna doesn't have nearly as much multi-attack as the say a primal build would have. So main handing this weapon, it's kind of rather hard for Magna. So I don't recommend it being barred at all. Though you can run it as a one-off if you want to be like, I don't know, a doctor like you want to mean it for doctor i guess and you want to solo yubaha that's an option but i recommend i do not recommend it personally so that's my stance on the mirror blade shard on to the next weapon okay now we're on to the galilee league insight now this weapon is very premium it's a the best way to describe this weapon it's a premium fenir bow that's where you can if you're a newer player, you're probably going to get most of your value out of this weapon. Um, it does also sport a very nice crit and double attack rate boost medium. Now, as I mentioned with crit weapons, it's very hard for me to rank them due to the fact that as a newer player, um, generally, you don't get the same amount of value out of crit weapons as let's say you would get out of a normal weapon because you're likely to be running one Ellie for most of your content. And that alone does kind of hamper your damage because you're not really making the maximum use out of the second skill. This applies to every crit weapon in the game. Um, the, their value skyrockets on Ellie and null Ellie. But as a newer player, generally, if you invest into one, um, one Ellie, you tend to bring that Ellie everywhere, making the grid a little bit weaker off Ellie. And that does hamper your overall damage output. I'm trying to keep that in mind that generally pe people who are watching this type of video are newer players and I want to explain that to newer players as if you're a more end game you should already know this by now so it's unfortunate but th that's how the game goes now with this weapon it's not that great a main hand it does give a shield effect a 3.5k shield to all allies which is not bad it does beat out uno which was 2k shield so it's not a bad Ogi effect. And you also get damage immunity for one hit. Though I don't recommend really meaning this weapon if you're like Magna. Um, I would not run this as a main hand. You do have better options than the Merg. So unfortunately, our GW, uh, GW uh, sword, um, I had to somebody mention that in the video, the previous video, I, I actually forgot about it. So you do have other options which are just as good, so. I wouldn't really bring this weapon as a main hand for Magna. So its viability for Magna is next to zero. So if you're a Magna player, just, just skip this part. Now with Primal, we have to talk, right? So Primal is a little bit more special, right? So because it's a crit weapon, your primary goal with every crit weapon, if you're building a grid around crit, is to hit 100% crit. Now, thanks to 140 Primal, you do gain quite a bit of value now when you're building crit builds at especially with the original boost only being 120 the 140 boost gives you a lot more options to hit that 100 percent easier now combine that with double primal that's a big boost the only problem being is that you kind of want to combine this weapon with another weapon in water it'll be the next weapon i, work, I um discuss but there's another weapon called a tie side um bow or something like that um that weapon goes really well with this weapon as this weapon is more of a way for you to have stamina, stamina modifier in your grid while that bow gives you more normal modifier and crit so you kind of want to maximize as many modifiers together with both weapons therefore 
the amount of weapons you run in grid it's kind of preference like if you want to run more stamina uh, more of a stamina build let's say in like lower tier content where you take next to no damage you may want to run two of these bows i mean two of these spears and a bow so you do have that option and let's say for a lower tier, uh, like higher tier content, when you take more damage, you may want to run two bows and one spear. Do know you do have options here. So I would recommend one to two of it, um, depending on which option you want to go. This also depends on what um, the, this amount of weapons you have in your pool, right? Like if you don't have the weapons, then you can't really bar them. So it really depends on which options you have, but it's anywhere from a one to two of Personally, I've, I've also seen three of this weapon as well uh, Though I don't really, I don't really recommend that that's more of a ultra mid max build But it really depends on what you're going to build yourself. So You got you got to look at your box and you know Take a take a guess at which build you want to go personally, but it's anywhere from a one to two of so That's how I feel about this weapon Let's get on to the next one and when you look at that, wow, another water weapon, holy. Now this is our first 3.5 weapon. Now I'm gonna give my opinion on the weapon. This, let me explain it and you guys can either agree with it or disagree with it, you know? It, it really depends on the player. Now, Tai side spirit bow is foliage bow. This bow is very decent, but what it really required is a really min max build and it's not really viable for newer players because the second skill is pretty much dead for you and majority of content if you're a newer player um it's, it's pretty much a dead skill and you probably won't be using you won't get much value out of it and not to mention if you're still a newer game player you, there's also one raid called twin elements where your weapon is also kind of dead so it's like <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple of areas where your weapon can just be a flat dead weapon where it's like legit worse than a merg so just know when you're building this weapon that you can just straight lose value in it but it's not a awful weapon by any means just know that the crit because of the way the crit works and if you're a newer player generally you, you don't have right you don't have the access to multiple pools for every for every content you run so you can't just like oh let's say you're going against let's say like a dark boss right you can't be like oh i'm gonna run my light team Generally, your light team is probably weaker than you, the one Ellie you invested your your bars into. So, just got to throw that out there for the newer players, you know, because most people watching this are going to be newer players, right? You're not going to be people who have six Ellie's all geared up properly and you have all optimal characters ready to go and you can just swap out and run crit sets in each optimal build and not have to worry about things. That's not that generally not the person watching this video, right? You wouldn't be asking my help for it. But um, now with this weapon, it's, it's a pretty strong weapon. The reason that it, I, as I mentioned, that I don't think it's that great as something you want to bar early on is because of the crit hit rate. While now this large crit hit rate, it's very good on Ellie. It's, it's on Ellie only, so, or null Ellie, so it's not that great. In terms of grit, I don't recommend this for Magna at all. As the 3.5 weapon, it's not something that I would recommend for magna i don't even recommend it as a main head weapon either due to the fact that the ultima katana served you better purpose especially if you're running bony toe nine times out of ten you're best off running uh, ultima katana um so magna users just avoid it now primal wise this is another a problem with the crit weapons now generally it's this is also a one to two of it really depends on what you're trying to build Rec i recommend kind of mismatching them like if you're gonna run this weapon in your grid you, you should mismatch it with the galilee's uh insight you shouldn't be running just one weapon you should be running both of them in together in tandem because of the fact that they work best together as you get more crit and you also get more modifiers at the end of the day when you're building a bar in a pool you want to stack as many different modifiers that you possibly can and if you're missing it on that strength modifier from galilee's weapon or if you're missing out from the large crit, you can have either a problem where you don't have enough stamina modifier, or if you don't have enough crit modifier to have 100% crit. So you're gonna have to end up doing a map yourself. I'll probably link something in the description to to see how much crit each weapon gives with double Varna and single Varna, so you guys can get a better idea about it. 
but generally it's one to two of the bow depending on what build you plan on going with it so that's how i talk about the bow and uh tell me how you guys feel about it and let's go to the next weapon okay now we're on to the benedia now this weapon is another 3.5 weapon but it's a little bit different as it's very very disliked this weapon been memed on to all so many levels right um I, I i can't even express how many levels of memes that this weapon has brought upon people and its only use was recently removed with the introduction of the ride to the beast gun the fire one i don't remember the name of it i think it's like summer mirage i think um with that weapon this weapon used to the benedia used to be the optimal weapon for ogi builds that ran mechanic now not nearly as important with the summer mirage existing so it did lose a little bit of value with that now the ogi effect on this weapon is abysmal like a <laughs> It's like bad. <laughs> boost to all allies attack and boost the skill damage. Doesn't even create skill damage cap. So it's just like, if you're magnets, <laughs> don't even, it doesn't exist to you pretty much. You're better off running like Summer Mirage. Um, for Primal, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't ever run this as a main hand. JK, I, run, I do run it as a main hand, but um, <laughs> that's for different reasons that I will not explain, but Generally, you don't want to run this weapon as a main hand most of the time, but just know it's an option for people who don't have Summer Mirage. You can run this as a main hand until you unlock the weapon. Now, the the skills on it, it's another crit weapon, which is why it fell into 3.5. It does boost the double attack rate as well, which is not really that big of a boost. So it's pretty much inconsequential. Um, what we're really looking at is the medium boost to critical hit rate. Now, this weapon actually may be viable, actually. I, I know it sounds crazy, but this weapon may be viable in the upcoming High Dragons if Double Agni doesn't has a hard time keeping, like, either low health or high health. If, if they stay around, like, 50 or, um, depending on, depending on the boss, right? If they stay around, like, 50 to 60, a pure crit build could be more optimal if the fight is not like instantly killed i don't know anything thing about the fight but it's not a, a possible it's not impossible that this weapon can become more viable with that upcoming raid as having another crit modifier and double agony can make it pretty decent i don't believe this is possible though um i just want to mention it because you know people may mention it in the comments and i just want to address my thoughts on it that it can become possible with double agony in the future and not one specific content depending on how long it is right if the fight itself is like exploded in like a couple shivas right from like 18 players then it's not going to be viable right but if it's a fight we are like you you can't just completely explode it in a couple of minutes um it may end up being viable we'll see how it goes in the future though but honestly this weapon at most, it's a zero to one of in uh, primal. I just don't think it's that great. Um, there's one on this account. There's a couple on this account actually. So maybe in the future it can become more viable. But right now, it's a zero to one of for magna for for primal. As for magna, it's a fat zero. Sorry, Bendia. That's how it goes. Let's get on to the next weapon. And now we're on to the last two weapons, both being dark. With first, we're looking at the Unheil. Now, this weapon is the biggest, I don't know, I, what the, question mark. So, this weapon sports no attack, no normal attack modifier, which is a big, whoa, what What am I looking at? As it gives a boost, a big boost to CA specs and chain burst specs, this is super, super bad, actually. It's kind of like the Shiva weapon, actually. I hope this, I hope this does not happen to Shiva weapon. Where it gives a nice big boost to CA specs and chamber specs, but it does not give any attack modifier in the second scale, actually sporting a boost to maximum health and debuff resistance. Now, this can actually be really good, um, maximum health and debuff resistance in harder content if you need to not be debuffed. Like, for example, if you're taking uh, Lucifer's 
Ibilis attack, it does allow you to more than more than average um, be able to dodge the sheer amount of debuff that he can apply with that attack. But in a that's a very niche situation. I wouldn't call that something that you know you want to build it for. But because it doesn't have the attack modifier, you and like depending on the build, you're pretty much running a non-weapon grid build. Um, it's kind of similar to running a champion class weapon. Like this is the best way to explain this weapon. It's pretty much a premium champion class weapon. Um, the glory ability, the uh, CA specs and chamber specs, it's good but you're really not gonna be running this in a harder content. For example, the high dragons, depending on how much defense it has, you're probably not running this weapon because it just does, it lowers your overall damage output too much. It's really lowers your damage output a ton. Now, that's just running it as a grid weapon. It, it's, it lowers your damage output too much, but as a main hand though, boost to all allies, critical hit rate, and boost to damage cap. Now, the problem with this weapon, as I mentioned earlier, it has no normal attack modifier at all, or strength, or stamina, or nothing. Because of that, it's rather hard to consistently cap with this weapon in higher defense content, but in lower tier content, you can see that cap. So it's a good weapon for like level 10 raids, but you can make the argument that level 10 raids, it's all about one turn Ogi, and at that point, you may as well just run Chrysor and just do one turn burst and be done. So the real viability of this weapon, it's, it really depends. Um, I've seen people do well with it in Akasha as a main hand, but I've also seen people do well with a ton of plethora options, right? So it really depends. I personally, it's a one of as a Hades player. If you're running Hades, you, it's a one of if anything. It's not something I would recommend you rush out to bar it or anything. Like, I do not recommend it at all. And Magna, just don't even look at the weapon. You, you're pretty much just better off ignoring it. Um, you don't really gain much out of it. Magna already has a kind of a problem, um, especially if you're running like the Avatar weapon builds. So you really don't gain much out of this weapon. So unfortunately, this forget it existence and let's get on to the next weapon. And now we come to the last and final weapon, Blood Gang. Oh, please, please don't ban me, uh, YouTube. Thank you. Uh, but we're looking at the Blood Gang now. This weapon, it's a premium weapon. It's very good for one raid only currently, which is Fa. As it's a way to give you a, a little bit of healing, a 1K drain on your autos. Outside of that, though, the weapon is really not that amazing. It does give your main character a pretty decent Ogi damage, um, which is not bad. Personally, it's really looked at, at that one raid, with, but you gotta keep in mind the, the, the Ogi damage boost is not really that important on the element with Bahamut as a main or sub, or, you know, some people do run double Hades, so you do have options with it. The one problem with this weapon though, and it's a big problem, while it does have crit, it does have a double attack modifier, which makes it a little bit better than Rackham's weapon, the Benedia. But because it has the small attack modifier, it also gains a small crit modifier, killing its potential really for any crit builds um, for Hades. Now you can run a crit build in Hades with it, but you're gonna need a lot of these weapons. <laughs> so I don't recommend doing it. It's not something I'll call quote unquote viable due to the sheer amount of weapons you would need to hit 100% critical hit rate. And pretty much you need critical hit rate if you're gonna be running that, so. Unfortunately, it does lose that type of viability, but it's not a bad main hand for um, Spartan as, you know, Dark doesn't really have a ton of options when it comes to playing Spartan, unfortunately. So it's not a bad main hand at all. Um, the heal is okay. It does help you keep a midi without healing too much, which could be a problem with certain uh, weapons. So that's how I feel about it. Now, as for how many you want to run in Magna, I don't recommend running this in Magna personally. Um, you can run it in Magna as a main hand, as I mentioned for Fa, but it's more of a premium option. So it really depends on you if you really want to invest in a weapon like this for one raid. 
and it's not even that overpowered or anything. So it, it's anywhere from zero to one for that one instance for Magna players. Now Primal, I recommend getting one of, um, I've seen people run a couple of these weapons in a grid, but generally if you're running multiple of this weapon in a grid, it's because you don't have other options. Um, so it really depends on what weapons you have in your pool and what weapons you have options to, uh, access to. So recommended it's one. Um, you can obviously run more than one if you wanna have more critical hit rate. Though I don't think it's that great personally. That's my opinion though. So, And with that, we've reached equilibrium. You know, I've talked about each weapon. Tell me how you guys feel about it. I feel this video is gonna be a little bit more controversial though due to the fact that these weapons are crit weapons and some people have different opinions on crit weapons than others, you know? I'm trying to be general here because the crit weapons, right? They're really good, but they're also very bad, right? Depending on where you are and what state of the game you are, these weapons could be good, um, but generally for most players, let's say around, like the lower ranks, they're not gonna be that great for you because you know, you're more of a still in a one LE game um so it's unfortunate but it really depends on what you're really going to do with things um just tell me how you guys feel about it in the comments and uh thank you guys for watching after this video the next video would end up being the summon variant so um look out for that in the future and uh i appreciate any likes and um comments so i'll see you guys next time goodbye